Hey everyone, I'm Stefan. This is Graham. Hey guys. This is Travis. What's up? And we're three different ones. Last year we compiled a list of albums we think are interesting, and now we talk about them. Uh, today we're talking about Yo Bum Rush the Show, Public Enemy's debut album. We're going to go through every song in the listing and then give our overall, overall scores for it at the end. Uh, this is uh, this is kind of a difficult band to be purely objective on. Uh, hard to rate them exclusively on on their music without factoring in the the political leanings of uh, particularly I think mm. Chuck D's mm -hmm. uh, opinions shaped this band and and still does. Uh, and but but that is that is by design. A big part of the their appeal is their message, uh, and I that that's probably why this album was almost completely ignored by radio stations. Uh, had uh, had either of y'all listened to? A public enemy album but before this no um i heard all of them yeah no i'm just, I'm just kidding <laughs> i thought cycles <laughs> through the discography weekly <laughs> no um i feel like i've heard a song here and there but bring uh, the noise <laughs> probably um but, uh, yeah, d I was going to ask about this one. So this is their first, and it doesn't seem like it's one of their more, like, popular ones today. Is that accurate? I I'm actually not sure uh, where yeah. the Public Enemy fan base stands uh, on, re on really this album or, or anything. I, I, I don't particularly like it as much as... Uh, Fear of a Black Planet, and uh, I'm kind of... I'd probably give the, the edge to Apocalypse 91 over this mm -hmm. one, too. Honestly, yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a seminal album uh, right. for, for them, obviously, and the, the, the genre they are a part of, which I think most people would say is hardcore hip-hop. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I don't... <clears throat> uh, I, I don't think outside of the uh, first song in the listing, you're going to get yours. I, I don't think much, much of these songs uh, get much attention, or I, I doubt there's a lot of nostalgia for them, honestly. Mm. <laughs> seems, yeah, seems I, was, like... I was... Go ahead, go ahead. No, you're good. No, I was just going to say, I, I was kind of curious, like, amongst Public Enemy fans, like, how this fits in the mix. Because, I mean, this, I, I've only heard maybe two songs of theirs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm just I was very curious as to, <laughs> is this, like, what most of it sounds like, or? Um, they, uh, they, they get a little less crass, I feel like, um, mm -hmm. in later albums. Uh, some of the songs have a, a bit more of a serious tone. Uh, a lot of these songs are... I kind of classify as a little, a little goofy, or yeah, at the true. very least. I mean, if they they were, they were edgy and out there for their time. I mean, it's, you know, again, I, I don't know. I certainly don't want to insult anyone in the fan base who loves this album. Uh, I I wouldn't think it's that popular now, but when this came out in '87, this was like the fastest selling hip hop album ever. I believe it. Like it, it was, and I, I think it's largely because it, it was different and it was it, so profane and so it, it stood out. Yeah, for 87, this is pretty hardcore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My, my sense is that, you know, it's, it gets included in, you know, great albums lists mainly because of the influence. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and the impact that it had, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are fans that are like, "This is my favorite one." Um, oh yeah, but uh, it's very raw, which is mm. to be expected at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I mean, as you're saying, like hip hop was just kind of getting off the ground. I mean, yeah. Um. I'm trying to think what came like right before these guys. Was uh, uh, was Run DMC before or after this, or like 
contemporary of them? Um, I... God, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say they're... I think they were probably a little before. Oh, my gosh. Run DMC was founded in 83? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It was... They're... They're... They're pretty different. Oh. <laughs> Uh, how about how about Beastie Boys? They before were they, they they were like just before I think uh, License to Ill came out the year before ah. uh, this did, and gotcha. this that was produced by Def Jam Two. I think I think Rick Rubin worked on that album too. That dude, he's that, had his hands in everything. Yes, mm-hmm. he is very he's the very prolific, mm-hmm. and kind of looks like a wizard, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he really does. Yeah. Well, um, I was gonna say before we get into it, one thing I just wanted to point out <laughs> that just cracked me up is <laughs> Terminator X is listed on Wikipedia as lead scratch. Yes, I love yes. that. <laughs> yep, yep. He's got a whole song that's just yeah. just to, to allow him to show off. But uh, he's a lead at, scratch player at the back end of this album. Y'all want to talk about? You're gonna get yours. Sure, man. Is that the opener? Yep. And Let's do it. The, the best song. I, I thought. I thought this was a this was a good open. Uh, what one, What did y'all think? This one grew on me. Um, I I listened to this album like twice, I think. Um, and yeah, the second time I got around to this song, I was like, "This is there's something here." Mm-hmm. Like I I can't say I loved. Um, the album as a whole, but I would agree that this is one of the stronger ones. Same. I I really didn't know what to expect going into yeah. this album, and and this song just really surprised me. I was like, okay, is it going to be like <laughs> kind of like a rock band backed, yeah, know, rap album? Like, because you know, I'd heard the Bring the Noise like with Anthrax. And I'm like, okay, you know, I always felt like Anthrax brought that element to it, but it was like, well, there are guitars pretty much everywhere here. Yep. <laughs> but yep. yeah, I I liked it. Good opener. The uh, I could really tell in my headphones, but the way this was recorded is kind of interesting too. Like the way the vocals sound, they're like so crisp. I don't know mm. how to really explain that. Like, and I mean, they seem so in front of the music. Like, it seems like there's zero <clears throat> bass and like anything yeah. in the low end of this album. Kind the of music, a really odd mix to me. Music sounds very small. Very small. Yeah, yeah. Graham and I were uh, going to see Primus last night and <sighs> tried to listen to this on the way there. And my stereo sucks in my car. And I was like, dude, we can't do this. <laughs> yeah. We can't hear anything. No. Yeah. Yeah, Stefan, we went to a uh, a rock show that we bought tickets for in February 2020. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Where was it? Finally uh, happened. It was in Irving. Okay. At the Toyota Music Factory. Not to, uh, not to derail, but... No, that's cool. That's cool. Um... But yeah, our effort to listen in the car was kind of futile. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. I, I thought something interesting in this song, the uh, line about a 98 olds. I'm like, you know, because the album's written in 87. I'm like, what a weird thing to sing about, like a oh. 1998 Oldsmobile. Like, is that what he says? He said a 98 the, um, Olds, right? That's that. Huh. That's just the name, though. That car has been in circulation since the 50s. Really? 98 Olds? That it's the Oldsmobile 98 is the, is the, is the it's official. It's a model. Name. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, was like, I thought he was talking about a 1998 Oldsmobile. No, like, no, no, no. Turd. Like, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just classic mix up it's all good i see wow yeah yeah um i'm impressed with your car knowledge there stefan <laughs> i i've listened to this album a good number of times so i yeah i was, I was once confused by that i'm sure 
Also, my uh, dad's car obsessed, so, you know, it kind of ripples out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, so is our our good friend Travis. It's true. <laughs> we'll get a side pod going. Um, <laughs> just to, uh, I, I, um, I got, uh, Vernon Reed, who did the guitars on this album, uh, mm. I, I, I don't know why, why they didn't. I, I don't know if maybe they couldn't get him for more than a few days, but I, I, I think he does decent work in this song. And I mean, you you hear him in a oh, yeah. in sophisticated bitch. I mean, that song has a freaking guitar yeah. solo. Yeah, I, I know. Not... I, I was like, what the hell? There's a guitar solo in this. Okay, I know. <laughs> loved it. I didn't yeah. realize out of nowhere. I didn't realize that's who that was. That guy was in uh, another band. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, generic. <laughs> that guy played music before. He was in. Was uh, he Living Color? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. Dude, he shredded in Living yeah, Color. Did. Yep. Yeah. He did indeed. That would be a fun one to do. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. I I felt like um what did y'all think of uh, sophisticated bitch? Um well, I I think uh th- this is when th- this kind of stuff really has not aged well. Um, I this is the kind of stuff. 100% agree. That's... And but you know what? But you know what? I mean, I'm not even we we could do an entire episode on that. When you talk specifically about this song, I, I really don't think it's particularly good. Um, one thing, just one more thing on you're going to get yours is that they 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 pass the mic a lot between the the vocalists, the guys who are rapping, like in the I, studio. No, no, like just during during the song. Like I felt like nobody like hogged the vocals too much. Oh, in that I see. One. Like it was a lot of people like <laughs> jumping in and out. I don't know why they went away from that. Uh, it mm-hmm. feels like this one got way more. Uh, they, they didn't alternate as much uh, going forward right. on this album, and I kind of feel like that was a mistake. Um, the the chorus There's... is just you know it's so it's so fratty. I mean it, it's the, all, all of the lyrical content, which is unfortunately kind of the centerpiece of the song. Yeah, mm. you know Vernon is you know he kills it when he gets on there and. Uh, you know, I I liked the, the the bass at the beginning. I was hoping we'd get more musical stuff in this one, but it uh, it really was not meant to be. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a disappointment. I thought a lot of these tracks I thought were very repetitive. Mm-hmm. Sure, which bothered me a little bit. Yep. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, okay track didn't love it but yeah the guitar playing was good i like you said i feel like i mean just the music is not very timeless like this sounds extremely late 80s to me yeah yes <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know does. just uh yeah it's dated oh yeah sure oh yeah it was uh it was more enjoyable and at least surprising though than a uh, Musy weighs a ton. <laughs> My Uzi, just a total, mm-hmm. just a total flat line for me. <laughs> I, I yeah. don't really have much on so that one. Very of the times is how yeah it sounded to me. Yep, I'm sure Terminator X was giving it his all on the turntable, <laughs> but it just does nothing for me. Yeah. Yep. Spoiler: I did not care for the finale of this album, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh this, no! This one had a pretty, uh, pretty fat sounding beat, though. I'll give it yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it was okay at best for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I hate to say it, but I mean that's that's pretty much how I felt about this entire thing. Yeah. No, I I think that uh, there's no sense putting that off. I mean, I, I feel like. Uh, this was the first time since I first heard this album that I listened to it all the way through. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it doesn't, um, it has not really stayed with me. Yeah. Very much. It, I mean, it's, it's very consistent, but it, it's consistently the same thing, <laughs> which yeah. I, I really yeah. didn't love. Yeah. 
But yeah, we'll we'll get into that later. What y'all think okay. of a uh, time bomb with that little wall guitar intro? Loved it. Loved it. Love the funk elements yep. in this song. It's it's again. It, it makes it. It kind of makes me more upset with the other songs that don't feature the uh, the musicians they got to <laughs> to help them in the studio. I mean, I, I think they they're they're great and they they mesh really well with the sound. I enjoyed this one. I, Me I think too. this was a, a highlight out of where we've gotten through so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, w- I would agree with that too. Good beat. Um, Travis, I was going to ask you, um, I kind of got the feeling that um, these guys must have influenced the Chili Peppers. Like Funny this- you mention that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Chili Peppers have uh, have sampled or covered "You're Gonna Get Yours" before. Oh, okay. Really? Yes. I didn't know that? Yes. Yeah. That something about <sighs> this this album and like the style of the of the rapping, I, I guess, combined with the kind of funk, made yeah. me th- think of like um, stuff on like Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see it shaping that i mean i guess at this time this dropped alongside what uplift mofo i think the first chili peppers album that would be the third oh because you you got self-titled and freaky styly Mm. but you know uplift mofo is the last with slovak so the jf direction comes after that and yeah i think that's when they kind of shifted more towards something that sounded like this Mm. definitely which is it's funny to me because not to derail but uplift mofo party plan sounds like a very late 80s album and then it's like you got mother's milk which is still 80s but it's like it doesn't sound anything like an 80s album to me Mm. so yeah yeah Yeah. this this kind of late 80s i don't know it's it's pretty dated a lot of stuff from like I mean, I guess 89 is technically what you'd call 90s, you know? It seems like a lot of stuff that came out in 89 had that 90s sound, but... Sure. Yeah. Not to digress. No, no. It's just, uh, yeah, something I thought I'd, I'd bring up. Um, that That's cool that they covered the first track on this album, though. Did not maybe, know that. They, they've maybe. opened shows with it before. I don't know if they have an official... Uh, cover of it right right single but they have they have played it live i i I do know that cool yeah how about a too much posse okay this Mm -hmm. one i'd kind of like to do five and six as it is a little dual thing because this to me really personifies my frustrations with this album yeah yeah you know too much posse which is just like I, i i honestly laugh listening to this one because like complete cheese yeah and it's like this is i mean this was considered like hardcore and and uh (laughs) edgy and intense and scary to people and it's like it's it's just it's so (laughs) posse's trying to take over other posses i mean it's just it's so stupid (laughs) yeah so so lowbrow and yes I yeah. thought maybe it was like supposed to be kind of funny. I I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, but because it's like, but it's you contrast that though with the uh, with right starter, which I I, I love that song. Yeah, mm. much love better. love much better. right starter, and it's it's got it's got a really it's it, it's a fun song because it's like it's got a good beat, but it's got a very serious message. I absolutely love the chorus. I mean, it's just it's such. <laughs> It's just like it's like there are two bands almost, and it, it, I, I don't know if they were still like working on their sound. I realize this is a debut. Maybe w- we've covered some just unparalleled, awesome uh, debut albums for this podcast. You know, th- this one definitely doesn't measure up. So maybe this uh-uh. it's just kind of a, my bias feeling. Like, but this is like it. I get it. Almost made me like upset listening to a message to a black man after too much posse because it's just like. <laughs> Why can't we have more? Like, yeah, like, right. like I, 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 oh, I just, it, it just, it just bothers me. I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. 
No, no, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Like, um, yeah, it can be frustrating with like when the flow of an album gets kind of broken up. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're getting into it and then it's like, what a blemish. <laughs> um, yeah. too much posse. That's a uh, flavor flav, right? Oh yes. Flavor flav. Who, yes, indeed. I don't know about y'all, but I was introduced to him on the Flavor of Love show. Yeah. I think uh, I think for me <laughs> <Yeah>. it was <laughs> I think for me it was the roast of Flavor Flav. Oh, actually. Really? Yeah. But you know, it, it which is essentially the same thing as that show. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. That and the uh, Bring the Noise music video. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Bring the noise. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, this album, and I mean, I, I understand its significance in history, and I appreciate that, but, like, I just don't know. Like, there's nothing clever, like, in the rhymes or anything like that. I, I mean, maybe to an extent, but it's, like, it's just very, like, there's no play on like syllables or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just very straightforward. Yeah, I, I would say a lot of it's pretty straightforward. It's very on the nose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Message yeah. wise, I'm yeah. just reading the lyrics to um, "Too Much Posse" right now. And oh God! Oh God! Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I like to write starter. Some good scratching too. That, yeah, that was, you know, was stronger track. Some horns in there. Jogger there that. were, there were. Yeah. The yeah. next next tune starts with a weird synth that we don't really yeah. hear. Yep. In other songs, and there was like zero bass in this song. Yeah. So yeah. Kind of interesting. Just You're like, right. Just. Very forward vocals, and and you got the synth going. Yeah, the, the very kind of. It just seems empty. Sounds like a bee or something. Yeah. Or a wasp. Are we still on right starter? And, or... Oh, sorry. Graham was talking We're about on public, public enemy, enemy number, number one. one. Yeah. Okay. I, I... Yeah. 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 The buzz for sure. That's what tipped me off to it because that's what I've got yeah. put in town a lot. Yes. Uh, Travis, it's it's funny that you you describe this album as cheesy. I'd like to highlight uh, some lyrics from Public Enemy Number One, if that's all right with y'all. Please oh do. yeah, I love it. Suckers, duckers, ho hum, MCs. You can't rock the kids, so go cut some cheese. <laughs> 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 Just oh. sparing me to death with this no. one, and you can't even bl- you can't even blame uh, Flavor for that one, because I, I, yeah. I don't think he's featured on this song. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Old it's... Rock Rap 49er Supreme is what I choose and I use. I never lose to a team. Yep. Oh, yeah. Th- this one, like, this one, which sounds like they literally wrote it in the car going to the studios. For you grown-up criers, now here's a pair of pliers. Get a job like your mother. I hear she fixes old dryers. You have no <laughs> desires. Your father fixes tires. I mean, just like, <laughs> just, like it, it's, that, that does almost make me think that it, it, it was kind of like a parody. But yeah, I, it, I, Dude, it has to be. It has to be. Like, <laughs> you just got dissed, all but dismissed. Sucker duck MCs, you get me pissed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Master yeah. Trolls, man. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> I, I could see it. I I could definitely see it, given that uh, with, with Chuck D is the the alpha for this group. I'll uh, say this. I like Chuck D's voice. I like oh, his me too. voice a lot. And me I too. Think, and maybe later Public Enemy is this way, but I feel like if he had a lot more in terms of like a beat, I think I would have liked this exponentially more. Like if the, if I don't know, that it just left me wanting more. It was so small. Like Graham said, the sound. Yeah. You know, I, I feel I, like that would have exponentially made this better i'd be curious to hear their later albums yep same because i would 
I would recommend uh, Fear of a Black Planet for sure. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like they really developed. Right. Um, because this, from what I've read, this album isn't like that well regarded compared to, you know, albums like Fear of a Black Planet. Um, so, yeah, first album, kind of rough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, working the kinks out still. Yeah, yeah, they're young too. Oh, yes. How about it? MPE? Hmm. They uh, that? they kind of started uh, gimmicking up a little bit uh, with that that voice saying uh, with the uttering the public enemy over that weird like discordant metallic sounds. Oh, I was going to yeah. ask y'all if you have any idea what that means. Um, the uh, the sounds. Yeah, some kind of like mm. clanking or something. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to it right now. Uh, I think though MPE is a, uh, it's something. I think it's like something polyphonic expression. I would guess mm. something, something like so, some kind of a electronic element they use uh, in a recording studio. I think that, like, a, like a drill or something. Yeah, yeah. Like I, the, this, I kind of get office. why they. I kind of get why they they went with that though. I, f- I thought the song was a little bit stale. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, For sure. track is all I wrote. Yeah, this mm-hmm. it's, yeah, rapping is very slow. There's not a lot there musically. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 good to talk about the the title track if, if y'all are. I felt yeah, the man. same way about it, honestly. I hate yeah, to say that, but no, it's okay. It's okay. Speak your mind. Go for it. That is it. <laughs> That's all you got? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that... I feel like... Uh, and I don't know what number track it is on this album. Nine. It, nine. Okay. Yeah. If the title track's number nine, I don't know. Seems like a bad sign. I think this is a... Uh... I almost hate this track just because I feel like it's such a missed opportunity. I love uh-huh. the idea of like the narrative of like them them being rebuffed at the door uh, for being they either look like they're just too rough or too you know too violent or they're just they're the guy the the ticket guys being a dick and then they like they organize like a crowd to rush the door. I mean I I, I think that there's there was a cool song in here somewhere. Right. I just feel like execution wise, they just, they just couldn't, they couldn't nail it. And it's, yeah. a, it's a shame that they kind of went with it anyway. Uh, the really honestly, outside of that, uh, the only thing that stands out about it is that weird lispy talking sound. I couldn't tell if that was a Mike Tyson impression or if it was supposed to be <laughs> like Louise Guzman or somebody, but it, that that's, that's literally the only other thing that, that stands out about the song for me. Mm-hmm. They yeah. they referenced Tyson a lot, uh, and I know that Chuck D is a boxing fan, so I would think that's it. But I I I couldn't be sure. I mean, that, that's kind of what it matter. sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> that is an odd odd moment. We need to get on Tyson's podcast and ask him ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah, I, th- I think he would he would be down for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seems like a chill guy. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's slip into the DMs or how how do people do that? Well, that, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to do it now. Boy, uh, was this the was raise the roof the first time that the uh, the house on fire thing was used in a song? I don't know. I couldn't tell you, man. Yeah. Scratch City here, though. Is that sure. yes, yes? Is, is that what "raise the roof" means? It's yeah. I mean, they 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 mention it in the lyrics. You know, the roof's oh. on fire, house on fire. It's a buck wild house party. Mm. <laughs> I don't. I guess I don't understand the uh, the metaphor. Yeah, it's just a saying, you know. Yeah, it's a cool dance move too. It is. 
to raise the roof. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what uh, what I had on this song. What did you guys think? It, it was a long song. Yeah, there was. And there's a lot of deep cuts to um, African American Greek life, too. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, Al- yeah. Alpha Pi Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha, which is the uh, the, the mm-hmm. big black sorority APAs, Black Frat. I mean, it's a mm. is is a lot of some deep cut stuff in here. Uh, you know, I, I feel like this is a this is kind of house music, or, or I guess it, it could have been <laughs> in the late eighties. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is a uh, I, I I I don't know. God, this one doesn't do much for me. I'm I'm really trying to put off talking about Mega Blast. Honestly, <laughs> let's get to it. Horrible, yeah. horrible. Yeah. You didn't horrible. like the uh, the reverse vocals. I didn't like any of it. It's just oh. it's. I, I thought that tapping and that electronic screech as the rappers were trying to talk. It just. I mean, I I, I I've always found this song just perplexing and a waste yeah. of a, a waste of a track. Like they, they surely they had a better song something <laughs> better than this did Maybe you not. like it more or less than terminator x speaks i mean at that I, point i was just i thought terminator <laughs> x had something yeah it had some wall guitar it was yeah. different at the very least the, the funk um yeah, what I would say about Mega Blast is it it sounded <laughs> extre- like most of the album sounded kind of lo-fi. Yeah. Like it was recorded like in a bedroom or something. This one definitely sounded like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. which, you know, is, can be kind of a cool effect. It, it I think bottom line for me was it wasn't a great song. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's about how I feel. That's about yeah. how I feel, man. Yeah, Terminator yeah. had a had a good uh, good rhythm section, you know. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a fun dance track. I was I was surprised that they uh, they ended the album with this. I still am, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Kind of Dude, feel, feel I just good. I, I have to touch on a lyric from Mega Blast. Do it. All right. Fake Hawaiian suit, scratched up knees, in his refrigerator, bread, water, cheese. Antique fork, how long will it last? We'll see in 12 minutes when he wants the blast. Why do they talk about cheese so much on this Dude, album? Dude, they love <laughs> cheese, man. I guess so. They bring it up a bunch. Maybe I mean, some kind of conspiracy. I, I think that's the only answer, really. Yeah. Dude, I, they must be master trolls, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, yeah. their, logo, their logo is a yellow square. Yeah, clearly cheese, cheese. Is, cheese is usually yellow. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> um, <laughs> back to the uh, closer. I think it's supposed to be crosshairs, though. Yeah, it's cheese. Yeah, you're 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 probably right. <laughs> hey, hey, they both start with a C. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> tin foil hat Travis is swooping in here at the end. <laughs> it does look like they changed the logo a little bit after this album. Yeah, they probably changed a lot of things after this album. Yeah, it which started I'm, out as a block of Swiss cheese, and then which was turned into crosshairs. I mean, again, like it, I'm, I'm glad they. I'm. A, I think that's a. That's a point for them, though, that they did change because, again, oh, yeah. this thing sold a shit ton of copies. Like, it was... Yeah. It, 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 I mean, it, it didn't matter that critically it was kind of eased. I mean, uh, people people connected with, with, with this. Yeah. yeah. They, they liked it. So, and the fact that they didn't... Uh, they didn't kind of sit on their hands and rest on the laurels of that, I, you know, points to public enemy for continuing to advance absolutely yeah and this this genre was like just kind of being developed i mean they were dude kind of creating I just, it i just yeah. read something that said that the genre's progressive rap like some of the albums their later stuff was progressive rap 
in hmm. Sample Sample Delphia, Sample Delica, something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Delia, sorry, Sample Delia. Okay, kind of like psych- psychedelia. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Would I think y'all, a lot of people got married to the the hardcore image of them because it was yeah. so shocking when they first came out. But it right. that really that that really that that's an overly simplistic take on Public Enemy. Yeah. This Agreed. this is a, I mean this is a a serious band that absolutely like cycled through different sounds. They yeah. did, they did not get married to what to what worked in '87 and just kind of fly that into the ground. Yeah, that's that's my sense. Um, and I I would like to do, you know, whatever you would consider their best album, "Fear of a Black Planet" or was it Apocalypse '91? Yeah, uh, the enemy strikes back. I think. Mm. Dude, it looked like the next album was pretty big too, though. Yeah, yeah. Looks like there are lots of uh, big hits from that. What'd y'all think of this overall? <sighs> um, I've uh, this uh, this band. Uh, I, I'd heard a lot about them before I listened to it, and first time listening to this album, I think I was in college. Uh, uh, truth be told, I was a little disappointed, and I still kind of feel that way. Yeah, yeah, fair Dude. enough. It's again debut album, so it's it's totally understandable that they were still kind of figuring out what worked and what they wanted to do. But yeah, just taking all the context out for this album, uh, I would say, I would say it's probably about a four out of ten for me. I can't say yeah. I like half the half the songs on here. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's more I dislike than what I do like. So yeah, four out of ten. And I don't I don't think for anybody who's into hip hop or wants to look back at like the the origins of the the hardcore aspect of that genre, I would not tell them to start with this album. I I, I don't yeah. think I'd recommend this to anybody. Dude, I, I think I'm gonna have to agree with you on just about everything there. I think I'm I'm gonna go four out of ten, and I, I don't think I'd recommend it either. Because <laughs> it, I mean, if I started here, I don't think I would have sought anything beyond this. Like it, it would have stopped here. <laughs> yeah. If someone was like, "Oh yeah, you got to get into this. Like, check this out first. I, I, I don't think I'm checking anything else out after this. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, I, you know, this, this is a hard one for me to rate because I think it does have a huge, you know, important role in what followed it. I think it kind of set the stage for a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I never see myself going back to listen to this album again, ever. Yeah. You know? I'm, yeah. I, I'm going to agree with you guys. I was going to say about a four. Like, I wouldn't put it much lower, just, I don't know, because it did, I didn't just, like, hate it or anything like that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. of course. It has its moments, but still, I'm in the same boat where not going to go back to it, not going to recommend it, Um, you know, it's it's more of a, I don't know, it's important because of its impact. And it's right, place yeah. in history. Yeah, yep. but like we always say, you know, <laughs> take the context out of it. How does it stand? Sure, yeah. or what sure. it yeah. is. And it's like eh. it just yeah. doesn't do much for me. Same. Agreed. Agreed. No. Well, any any other thoughts? Or gonna wrap this up? Nope. I'm good, that's, man. That's all I've got. Well, if you're still with us, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, you know, as always, like, uh, share the episode, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll come back at you soon with another album review. And if you have one that you'd like us to review, just uh, leave the name in the comments and we'll get to it. Uh, as always, we're three different ones and we'll see you next time.